Okay, what up ladies and gents, your favorite Asian robot right here. This is Today I Stayed Inside and Played Video Games, alright? And today I stayed inside and played Domless. <laughs> okay, so, people have been asking me to do the easy chain blade build again, right? Now with the recycle cells and the reuse cells and all that, okay. I'm going to show you guys how to modify the easy chain blade build into its current form, okay? Svate's pincers are your ideal choice for new chain blades. Why? Because they come with the UE that as you dodge attacks, you cool it down and it deals a lot of damage as well. It also has pulse baseline, which is very good for chain blades because pulse, all right, can be used to time your chain blade slam. All right, this is very important. I'm going to remove my camera so you guys can see everything in detail. You will want to start off with the pulse cell and recycle cell inside your Savate's pincers as your weapon. Okay, keep in mind that this build contains no trial cells and no legendaries. Why? Because that is basically how we do this. We do have an exotic helmet, but you don't need to power surge it. You can actually leave it unpower surge because you're only going to be able to power surge it, if I recall correctly, for the Skull Forge after you start doing escalations. However, if you can power surge it, it's great. All right. So, like I said, this build is for newer players because no trial cells, no um, legendaries involved, okay? Hurricane Blades will be your mod of choice here, but you can literally use any mod in, and it won't make you any less efficient, but ideally get Hurricane Blades, okay? Um, for your special Reaper's Dance, which is the default, okay? And then for your Omni Cell, you've got a choice. If you're going to use the Tempest Omni Cell, which is for even more raw power in this build, right? Change your lantern to the Koshai's Bloom, okay? And the cell will remain the same. You're going to use Reuse. But if you're going to use Iceborne, all right, where you already have lifesteal and damage reduction, right? What you're going to do here is you will use the Pangar Shine to slow down non-Ice Behemoths. It's not going to work against Ice Behemoths, but you'll be fine anyway. And same cell, Reuse right here, okay? For your helmet, you've got the Skull Forge with a Parasitic Cell. This is your survival. You've got a Scrave Wing Jacket with an Endurance Cell. You've got the Fiery Gauntlets with a Recycle Cell. And you have the Scrave Wing Boots with a Reuse Cell. Basically, what you're going to have in this build is Adrenaline 6, Endurance 6. Now, how do you use Adrenaline together with the Skull Forge? This is a technique that you have to learn. The Skull Forge basically generates a stamina shield whenever you use it, whenever you're dealing damage. This allows you to do an infinite chain blade spin since you basically will never lose stamina. All right, but you have to da use your dashes first to set the stamina level where you want before attacking. Okay, so you will never get the full benefit, like you're never going to hit zero stamina for the full 63% damage, but you usually get around 50%, and this 50% is not going to disappear. Even if you take a hit, even if you get whacked, you can, you can always set your damage level, which is so important with this build. Pulse will give you a guaranteed critical strike on every fifth hit, all right? And this means you can time the chain blade slam to always be critical, okay? Recycle, as long as you're hitting the same part, you will deal up to 60% bonus damage. It's very awesome. Reuse plus six is, well, okay. You've got a choice here as well because the Skull Forge comes baseline with Molten. If you would prefer, you can choose to go with a full Molten and then just have a Reuse uh, plus three because the amount of attack speed that you gain doesn't change, all right? What happens when you go up to plus six reuse is that the chance of gaining the full attack speed bonus, which now reuse will give you 10% no matter what, whenever you break a, a behemoth part, but there's a 90% chance at reuse plus six to get 20% increased attack speed instead of 10%, and it gives it to all of your allies as well. So you don't need to go reuse plus six. Reuse plus 3 is often considered enough. Molten drops also increase your attack speed by 10%. Okay, so if you're okay with it, Molten plus 3 will generate 2 Molten Hearts every 23 seconds. Each Molten Heart Orb gives you increased attack and movement speed as well as burning immunity for 8 seconds, and they stack. You can stack as much as you want. So if you'd like to have a constant 10% attack speed bonus as well as... Uh, movement speed bonus and fire immunity, right? 
you can go for plus six molten instead of plus six reuse. But if you'd like to gamble a bit more and go for 20% increase attack speed as soon as you break apart, which is quite easy to do with this build, you can go for plus six reuse instead. Okay, so the choice is yours. I suggest you try both and see which one suits you. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate the plus six reuse version when I go into this. Okay, so that's about it. And parasitic plus three is just your survival. Even when we use Iceborne, we still use Parasitic plus 3. But just keep in mind that you will need the Koshai to balance yourself out if you're going to use the uh, Tempest version of this, okay? Alright. Now, combat demonstration time, okay? Um, my chain blade's a level 15, so I can't really show you the super, super high end of combat, but... In general, with this build, and because the chain blades are my main, we'll go to Twilight Sanctuary and we'll just go smash some creatures there. You do not need any potions with this build. It's very easy to run, alright? You do not need any potions with this build. However, you must learn the appropriate technique when you use this because this build requires that particular play style that you have to understand, which is because you're using adrenaline, right? You need to sap your stamina first before you actually get into combat. And I'll teach you how to do this, all right? I'm going to show you live example of how all this is done, okay? So no panic, no problem, okay? This is the... Ru did I did I just accidentally... Oops. Okay, never mind. I'll just recreate the window. One second. Move myself here. Because instead of uh, undoing the window, I accidentally deleted it, which is pretty awesome. There we go. Back to normal. Okay, okily dokily. Now, let me make myself a little bigger. Why? Because you should see my sexy face. Okay, now we're going to go in and do this, all right? Um, we, what is the closest behemoth? It would appear to be the Gift Stalker. So let's go fight it. Now, like I said, with this build, what you have to recognize is that you are, okay, going to need to play in a specific way. So first, start by sapping your stamina. You see that? By doing this, I set my stamina at a level that I want it to be at. Okay, interrupt the enemy, knock it down. Now, as you attack... You will literally be able to do unlimited chain blade spins, okay? Why? Because your stamina will never go down. So you will constantly have an attack bonus and just be able to literally spin your enemies to death, okay? So this is what this build was designed for. Basically, no concern over stamina. All you gotta do is just dodge when necessary and just keep fighting, okay? As soon as you get a part break, okay? Oh my god, I got stuck on a tree. Oh, there we go. Great. So yeah, this is about it. Now, you probably will want to run because this build doesn't have discipline, so it's a bit harder to interrupt the Riftstalker. Alright, so I'm just gonna run. Just gonna run. Okay. There we go. Now, as long as you are attacking, keep in mind that you have unlimited stamina, like I said. So don't ever sweat it. Just go ham. Just go ham. Okay? You literally do not need to be concerned. Pick up the Molten Drops where you can, and you'll probably have a fun time. Okay. Now, when you're ready to slam, you want to try and time it with your pulse hits. However, if the creature moves away, okay, you're going to miss. That's fine. Like I said, use your stamina very freely because you don't have to be concerned. You also will generally generally recover quite a bit, so feel free to just go go ham and wild. Alright, your attack speed bonuses will be constant, and also because of the shock element, you can, as long as it's not a shock behemoth, you will usually be able to uh, benefit from that. Just be aware that with the increased attack speed, right, sometimes coordinating your attacks can be a little bit tougher, but pretty much, there you go. You'll be able to finish off any creature with no trouble, as you can see. I can just talk while doing so. It's very simple and easy. And of course, ideally, all of these easy builds are designed for behemoths 2 to 3 levels above you. If you take on behemoths way above your level, your fights will be longer. Even if it's the, a creature with the same element as your weapon. 
if you were to fight something that's closer to your level, say three levels above you, which I'm about to demonstrate, okay, you'll have a much easier time. Remember, don't get complacent in combat. You always want to be in a situation where you basically um, set your stamina level first, and then you go into your endless spins. And you try to aim at the same part so that it breaks faster. Because not only do you get plenty of recycle bonuses for doing so, you will just have a much better time. So, that's what I do, alright? I use my stamina very freely for movement, everything, for dodging, all that stuff. And then, I attack to set my stamina level because, like I said, I'll always have the stamina to dodge, I'll always have the stamina to do pretty much whatever the hell I want. Alright, try to pick up your molten drops whenever you can, but if you don't, I also understand. You don't have to panic too much on that. Okay. Missed that, but that's okay. Like I said, as the creature, like, goes off or whatever, you can freely use your chain grapple to get into, you know, close range or whatever. You can use your stamina freely without worry concern. It's just so easy to use this build. And this is why it's been used as the easy chain blade build for a long time. But now, you can pair it up with recycle for even more insane damage. So even though you're new to the game, you barely have to pay attention and you can still win any fight. You see? Like so. You've got plenty of survival, lifesteal, all that, all chalked in here. Immunity to fire. This build will just get you through pretty much anything. Of course, it won't reach the so-called optimal flawless damage, but hey, it's better than anything any other YouTuber puts out there. So try it for yourself, see it for yourself. Alright, if you like it, like, share, and subscribe. This channel isn't monetized right now. You want to see more content, donate via the tip link. Other than that, enjoy yourself, have fun with the game, alright? I'll catch you on the next one.